Uh, my name is Christine Gennaro, co-chair of the Warner Spawn Task Force, and I'm calling this public meeting to order at uh, 5.08. So I'll now take a roll call of the task force members, and um, why don't we start with Ann, we'll go around the room. Ann Clifford, Town Concord. Mark Powell. David Olin, Concord Scout House. Jeff Collins. Burke Holmes. Celia Kay. Toby Berkman, Consensus Building Institute Facilitator. Christine Bonaro. Uh, Bill Cabeza. Vicki Alani. Malcolm Bryan. Paul Bohm. Liz Morrison Howe. Keith Hen. Jeff Cook, Tom McCoy. Is there anyone on the line? I do not believe we have any task force members on line. Okay. All right. Um, so. Before we get into the goals for tonight, I just wanted to share with the task force that Sal uh, Ibarra, Ibarra from the um, CPW has resigned from the Waters Pond Task Force. He effective immediately. Um, he's basically he's leaving his position with the Town of Concord Engineering Division, and so therefore he has to resign from all his obligations and responsibilities with the town. And at this time. We do not have a replacement for him, and I think there's some discussion as to what's what. So, our main goals uh, for tonight's meeting are to finish the review of the 2012 management plan, uh, specifically the sections four and five, uh, to clarify any issues there, and also to hear from the Envision Concord Criteria Work Group. Um, discuss their proposed decision making criteria and um, hopefully seek approval on how we'll use that going forward. The agenda is on the slide. At 6.50, we will open the meeting to public comments as noted in the agenda. The meeting is being recorded and a video link will be posted to the task force website in a few days. And also note that there is uh, an updated Warner's Farm Task Force website. So that's been changed a little bit. There's uh, different pictures there. Uh, so that's good. And also, did I, I know that I received uh, an email from Laura, Laurie Austin, the town clerk, about the certificate of receipt of open meeting law materials. Did anybody else get that? Yeah. Email. Okay. So, and if you want, I mean, we can collect the paperwork here tonight if you have it, and we'll take care of that. So, okay. So um, is that something we all need to do? I'm not sure, actually. I so, I think that Lori Watson yeah. has reached out to each member if, if they don't have everything yeah. that they need. Okay. Um, so, if she has not contacted you, you are all set. But if she has, um, she said he's playing what's needed. Okay, very good. So the March 21st, 2024 uh, minutes, is there any discussion on those minutes? Okay. I just, so, uh, sorry, Liz, I would like to comment uh, to the edits that Toby sent out okay. today in, in, in response to the question. I think they were accurate, as I recall. I think I made some comments, but that wasn't me. Maybe made some related comments. And I do think if the terminology was initially written as broader system and there was a discussion of whether that's in our scope, um, I think that's a fundamental question for the whole task yeah. force. Mm -hmm. And I think this has to be a systems approach. Concord uh, Vision 2030 adopts a systems approach across departments. I think this is a social ecological system we're dealing with. And if we're only looking at some bounds that we can see today, uh, I don't think we're effectively addressing what we're charged with. So mm -hmm. semantics, I, I think the changes are fine. I think they reflect our conversations, but I think it's important that we adopt a systems approach to the staff. Yeah. I had a couple, couple of comments on the minutes. I, I sent uh, an email. One general comment on minutes in general, um, People say what they say right. at the minutes. Uh, it doesn't mean everybody has to agree with it, but I think the minutes have to record that. And if this, like on the broader statement, if that's true or untrue, if it's said, it's in the minutes. I don't think it's the purpose of the minutes to correct 
and, and modified edit for us. Um, related to that, there the suggestion was that maybe we have a caveat and disclaimer that um, I think that since there are a lot of statements, as best we can, we should attribute those statements to the individuals who make the statements. So when we read that, yeah, that individual made that statement. It may be hard for the note takers to do that, but most minutes, rather than have you know, a lot of statements and try to remember who said what, I, I think that, that would solve a few problems. You wouldn't have to have a disclaimer because it would it was a statement made by a person. And and that's more true to the what minutes are, I think, you know, who, who said what, as opposed to debating the accuracy of that in the minutes. There are other times to do that. Mm -hmm. Well, as, as, we, as we mentioned, natural resources and other commission committees in Peru does that. It attributes it attributes the whatever, whatever says to the person who said it. That makes sense to me. So, if this is something that the task force wants us to be moving forward, we can attribute um, individuals to the statements that are being made in the, in the minutes. If it's really what the group wants. So. Yeah. Sounds like it is. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Very good. Anything else? Well, I just want to know how we're responding to the point about broader system because I do remember us talking about how it fits into the broader recreational plan of the town. You know, the town doesn't have a lot of other recreational opportunities relative to population and water funds, you know, has greater needs from the community there versus if there are plenty of other recreation. So, if we're saying we're going to exclude looking at water pond in the context of a broader ecology of the town and the um, recreational opportunities of the town, I, I do have a concern about that. But, um, so what is our charge? I guess I just forgot that. Like what what we should read the charge, maybe. Yeah. Is, um, that's how we got here. That is true. Can I make a suggestion, though, that this may be a question outside of the minutes? Yeah, and that's, what, just, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think it's a very important question. Yeah. But, but if we get to approve the minutes and then maybe get into that discussion, if I completely agree with you, I think that's just right. I just don't want it to get in. Yeah. No, no, it should not be lost. And just a preview, in the discussion of the criteria, this, this issue will come up. Yeah. It, it will come up in front of the Senate. Okay. Okay, so go back to the minutes. Yeah, back to the minutes. So just specifically on the minutes, on page two, the, the bullet is about five or six from the bottom that starts with the 2012 management plan, addresses nutrient levels, but dissolved oxygen levels. I think it probably meant to say, but not dissolved oxygen levels, which is important for fish welfare. So I just, it was the one. I'm sorry, there. Where is it? Yeah, page can... two. It's the the last set of bullets under questions and the reflection concluded. It starts with the 2012 management plan addresses nutrient level, but dissolved oxygen levels. But um, I, I assume it was supposed to say, but not dissolved oxygen. Levels. I think that's correct. It wants to get that. So just um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that was Thank you, Mark. Paul, I just wanted to check in um, the the kind of two more, more minor suggestions that you had offered in the email had not been incorporated into the draft that was sent around. Um, you want, I can highlight those if you want to share. Yeah, yeah. What, what was it, when you mentioned the the planning uh, group? Uh, All right. When you first mentioned, I, I think you should mention the names because you mentioned the names later. But at first mention it was uh, two of others and NRC member of them. Mm -hmm. Then, then you mentioned the names later, so that was one thing. The, the other thing, there was a comment, I don't know if that was a verbatim comment or not, whether on the, the, the open meeting law, whether documents and emails could be subpoenaed. If that was said, fine. It, it, it seems like pretty uh, charged word. Yeah. Who said fine? But the issue is it can be, the public can be made publicly available. Subpoenaed implies a litigation oh. cost. And, and if it was said, fine, but if it wasn't, that was interpretation. I should soften that a little bit. Okay. okay. So I think, you know, and just an answer to the question since what was on the video, my, I kind of specifically looked at that section, but I believe both of those concepts, uh, there was maybe a mention of subpoena, but I think the broader point was made around being public, available to public. So if we wanted to say that, I think that's accurate. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah, that's all I have.
Okay. Then do I have a uh, motion to approve the March 21, 2024 minutes? With those amendments that have been suggested. So moved. So moved to approve. Move to approve. I'm seconded. I seconded. Excellent. Okay. I, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Any abstentions? Okay. The minutes are approved uh, as amended. Okay. So, business. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Um, so, thanks, thanks, Jeff. Uh, thanks, folks. So I think we'll, we can move into the conversation on the 2012 um, watershed management plan review and discussion. And just um, as you can see on the slide there, we'll, we'll talk about this for you know, the first portion of the meeting. Um, we have those two sessions that we didn't get to in the last meeting. We want to talk about them and then move in the second half of the meeting to giving the floor to our Envision Concord members to share a little, we'll share their work and have, we'll have a discussion about that. Um, so we can go to the next slide first. Oh, okay. So for some reason, the what's being shared to people online is not the same as what, um, what I'm seeing here, uh, what's on the screen. Um, so anyway, we can try to figure that out. That is the same. Oh, wait, they changed. Okay, great. Okay, thanks. So just to remind everyone, um, the purpose of our session here, um, talking about this 2012 plan, is just to clarify thinking, identify unanswered questions um, on the issues that are addressed in the plan. We're not trying to seek agreement, right? We're just getting you know, a roadmap of the kinds of issues that we're going to need to deal with right, related to the plan over the course of the coming months. Um, so, you know, if you have a hard copy of it, um, that your know, online version. Um, could be helpful to have those details. Um, but why don't we, why don't we press forward to the next slide? So um, this is um, basically the most of the content section four. Um, it's a pretty brief statement of management goals. Um, you might recall there were separate recreation goals that we discussed in the last meeting, and um, very happy to spend some time talking about these management goals. Um, I also think that maybe, and this is really a question for you all to agree or disagree with, but we don't need to spend much time on this and get going in depth right now because we're going to be looking at proposed criteria for our group decision making later in this meeting. Um, and this guy, you know, that part of that is likely going to involve deciding which management goals are most likely to our criteria, right, and beyond what's just in this document. So to the extent that that's what we need to talk about here, maybe we can just talk about in that in the later half, but that's up to you all. If anyone wants to dig into these specific goals, we can do that. But you can see on, on the screen there basically what, what the four goals are from, um, from the 2012 report. So yeah, I guess any burning questions or observations or concerns about these goals um, in terms of how they relate um, to the content of the report that people feel like we should talk about now? Well, these are yeah. Yeah, these are clearly the the ecological yes yeah. goals. Um, yeah. But to to Jeff's comment and the later discussions, I think we'll be talking about a broader set of exactly. goals. Yeah. These these align pretty closely with the the ecological part, which we'll see later. Yeah. Okay. The commentary. I think we all know in 2012, um, dam removal wasn't. Concept of the mm -hmm. was really radar in respect to large pond. And then I think the draft goals that we'll talk about later reflect that and elements of this language reflected. But just terminology that flagged that jumps out to me is preserving dot 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 within the pond. So that, that sort of there's some assumptions baked in there in terms of the, the range of alternative measures uh, in 2012 that. You know, don't include all the alternatives that they have been talking about. So it's just a, a flag that I think we'll we'll address later. Right. This is verbatim from the. Yeah. This is yeah. These are the goals from the 2012 right. This copy. Yeah. But to just the, but just to the greatest extent feasible, that yeah. they differ depending on the various mm -hmm. interpretation. They they vary depending on the alternative. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um. Any, any other comments on this? 
And just want to want to note um, for the record, we have Bruce Curlis, um, to another member of the task force who joined us. Welcome, Bruce. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's press forward um, to section five, um, which is, I think, obviously sort of a key meaning part of our conversation here. So what you see on the slide in front of you is basically the, um, the table of contents, the topics um, that the 2012 report addresses. So you see it talks about um, six different short-term management recommendations. Um, it has two long-term management recommendations. Those are all um, you know, discussed in some depth in the document. And then it lists six different options that were considered but ended up not being recommended. Um, so I think we'll we'll dig into any and all of these that you all are interested in, but I think maybe a initial threshold question is just are there any actions on this list that we feel like we can eliminate from consideration now? Um, for example, you know, we don't feel like we need to as a group do much more investigation beyond what's in this report on the ones in section 5.3, those options that were recommended, excuse me, were considered but not recommended, right, would be one thing that you, you mm -hmm. might think or not. So I guess, like, yeah, basic question, do folks feel like we can safely remove any of the ideas here, right? Um, I think we need to go through the criteria before we remove anything, right? Because once we hear the criteria, it might be like, oh God, shaking die, I don't know what that means. But mm -hmm. It might be the one that meets the most criteria. I don't know yet, but um, it feels like until we hear the criteria and we start mm -hmm. to apply it and understand what all of these yeah. things are, it's hard to remove them. For me, for sure. Do you, do you think it makes more sense then at this point, instead of going through these now to say, why don't you guys go through the criteria that they talked about? And that way we can say, all right, now we'll go through this list? Does that make sense? I have some questions about that. that yeah. May or may not like same. Like some example, like, so for me, I have a lot of herbicide stuff because it is so out of date. Like, are some of these now allowed in Massachusetts? Are there different formulations? I think it's probably a good idea to get those questions out before we start moving. Okay. All right. I think it's worth looking through these. I mean, the, the criteria mm -hmm. to be applied to against, against a set of alternatives. So they're not the same thing. I think well, it's worthwhile just scooting through these, right? Just to see if we can take any off the table, or or if they're any missing, right? And, and, right. Sorry, and I didn't see any reason why we couldn't go back if we discovered something that, that, that we that we had to remove. We might we may want to return to it. But I, I would be very curious to see if people would be open to removing some of these and discussing them. But should we understand them all? Should we just spend a minute? Like, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I, think so. I would like to propose that we remove the herbicide options. Um, I have not found sufficient information on the second one, but the herbicide that was used solely, I don't remember its full name now, mm -hmm. but it has been very clearly implicated as an endocrine disruptor and cause is um, significant um, abnormalities in fish. Uh, so there's, there's good documentation of that. So, and which herbicide was that? Uh, the one that was actually applied. Um, before so, the, so, 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 and wasn't there evidence presented that herbicides, you know, in terms of how quickly the water cycles there are not oh, really the effective? Yeah, yeah. The water, the water doesn't cycle throughout the entire pond. Um, so some of the yeah, a lot might be water effective water. in some areas. Is what you're saying. Uh, you know, besides the apply criteria discussions. No, I'm not saying they said I went to the Well, but this, that, are you saying that herbicide or herbicides? I would say herbicides in general, simply because the more we use herbicides, the more we discover public health implications of using herbicides. So I would, I would hope that as a, a committee, a, a task force, we could come up with some slightly less controversial solutions. 
Thank you. So thanks, Malcolm. I want to could we just press forward on this slide because I think we were, we're talking about um, the short term recommendations and these are just some of the considerations that um, we'll raise in the report perspective to these different short term recommendations. I can kind of to go through and, and sort of name what they are, but I also saw some hands in response to Malcolm, so I want to give those folks a chance to chime in. Um, so, Keith, did I see your hand a second ago? Did you want to chime in? Um, yeah, I I don't agree that the size should be removed. It's just off the get go. I will suggest if you want to remove something biological control for boost strife, it might actually be something we could just move from consideration. They're already in the system. They're doing a really good job reducing the strife. Um, there's really not much else you can do there. I'm not aware of any other biological controls that might be relevant for the song right now. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So the suggestion is it eliminated because we're already doing it. Well, it could be continued. Yeah. It's not doesn't need us to decide right. to do it. Yeah. Great job ahead, Paul. I have a question, a slightly provocative question. Is it appropriate for us to consider short term solutions? Uh, or, or is it not part of the charge selected long solutions. I don't know what the answer is to that. Mm -hmm. But you know, I mean, a short term solution is something you have to repeat. Mm -hmm. okay, it's, it's a short term remedy. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're looking mm -hmm. for? Go ahead, Vicky, please. Yes, yeah, so I think two things. I think herbicides is such a big um, uh, topic. It's like a really broad topic. I know we currently, maybe even last night, approved herbicides and usage in Congress for some certain tasks that we need done. And so I don't want to just put it out there as if um, we're going to solve problems. We might have a problem we need to solve with herbicides, because I think even with dam removal, we're going to unearth a lot of invasives. It's one of the only ways to do a short-term um, solution that we can then follow up with a long-term ma maintenance plan is to use herbicides. I'd like to know about that. Mm -hmm. It may be our only option. I don't want to throw it out at this meeting. Mm -hmm until we understand what our options are. Because if we create a situation where there's you know, 34 acres of invasives, I'm not pulling them all. So <laughs> you know, we need some solutions here right. at our hand, in our hands. And I think I don't love chemicals any more than anyone else, but I think we need to solve the problems. So, so I'm, I'm sensing we shouldn't take short-term solutions off the table. If they if, lead to, if they're, okay, that, I mean, if they're part of a longer term. That's fine. Just kind of right. that out. So I, think, yeah. I think the I think the suggestion is correct me if I'm wrong that you know we're we're going to come up with a package that is designed to address long term that's issues. Right. Some of these short term solutions could be important parts of that package. Right. Yes, yeah. 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 so I think you have to look at the financial side of things as well. So maybe for now we have to go short term and plan long term. So mm -hmm. it just depends on. Just because it's short term, I think that we should still take a look at it. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. We're dealing, we'll talk about a lot of intersecting things today, so we'll be nice things here. Um, in terms of the use of herbicides and any other alternatives, we've got uh, several with their impact on adjacent wells. One thing that jumped out to me reading this is impact on public water supplies downstream. Bill Ricca draws public water supply right of the Concord River, which is fed by ultimately from the show book. So um, that would be a consideration to be read. So a miss missing consideration that you think it from the 2012 report is impact on downstream municipal water supply. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. great. But, you know, that's with my criteria, right? Yeah, yeah. maybe that's the right thing. What, what, I have a question on uh, bottom ceiling, because I don't quite understand it, but because the commentary says numerous drawbacks, most I mean the recommended that's numerous drawbacks. Should that be should everyone be taken off the table? Right. There's one to take be taken off the table because the consultant said numerous drawbacks. Mm -hmm. so, right. And uh, yeah, on the screen there you see a couple of the kind of categories of drawbacks that they named, right? Um so what are what are your thoughts? Do you think we should or you know be skeptical about it or how do you think we should deal with that? It doesn't sound like it's, it's going to survive any kind of feasibility. But yeah. Again, I don't want to apply a criteria, but in the spirit of trying to reduce the number of pops to something that we can evaluate, maybe mm -hmm. that one we could agree off the table or not. If we don't know enough about it, then just leave it on. I just I feel like if we're leaving on, just they talk about sort of the shoreline and some plants there, I think it's 
I mean, I think some of these will be like a quick, but I think I, I sort of feel like anything that involves more than like a like what we have the food strike that everyone's kind of like, oh yeah. I think anything that's not an oh yeah comes off. Mm -hmm. Probably you know, like at least leave it on for a very quick discussion. Okay. I talk about hydro rate. I know they don't throw another one. I I've heard a lot of negative things about that. That it, that it spreads it spreads the uh, uh, the the, uh, the vegetation. Is that something we we could eliminate from this list? Well, I, that I, I would say it depends on the time of year you use it. So if you would get a time <laughs> with the roots out, then you're not going to be spreading the the plants that that. Something to consider. But with the pots, that mean we're still getting into the ground and shifted. It's, it's like you know you're talking underwater plants that you know mostly are tu are tuber like. So when you're sort of shifting them, and then even with the water chestnuts, like even a handful of them lose some, but now you're spreading them off further. So it's like you know, what is it for every plant you get two hundred? <laughs> so it's 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 a ridiculous amount. So you know that those are still going to be underneath winter, spring, summer, fall. And there's certain times of year when those they're, just, they're, they're there. They're there, and then they're going to come back. Full of, I mean, we. Can harvest mm -hmm. in Rhode Island all the time, and only after seven years are we starting to see a reduction. Mm -hmm. oh. So, um, you know, we can keep going on the conversation if we want to eliminate any of these. I'm also just curious, you know, one purpose of going through this is to try to make sure that everyone feels like they kind of were able to digest what was in the report on each of these, and you kind of have clarity on. Um, on what they actually mean and, and look like and sort of the reasoning behind why they will maybe recommend it or not. So I just want to really explicitly invite folks like, would anyone like to spend a little bit of time just sort of hearing from others to help them understand what any of these options really look like or mean? <clears throat> yeah, let's go ahead. I sort of said it before, but I want to explicitly say here that with the herbicide, I, since it is so old, uh, like I did a quick Google and it looks like the thing that they said was not approved in May, Massachusetts is, is approved it. now. That's right. Um, so, you know, so that sort of out of date, I'd be curious mm -hmm. what that would look like. And also just not knowing a lot about herbicides and then talking a lot about um, the different methods of releasing it and how that has impact or flood rates have impact on that. So I don't know if anything has changed around like methods of application and stuff like that. Just, that feels like an area that probably could change fairly quickly between mm -hmm. years ago and now. So I'd be curious for some updates there. Is that something that anyone at this table feels like they could help with now, or is that something that we want to set as a research agenda item for the group? I think we can bear some research or, you know, update. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's permitted, where it's changed in some ways, because a lot of the ones that were permissible had serious limitations. Right. So some, some sort of re looking into update on the herbicide kind of situation right now, right? Yeah. What's what's allowed? What what do we know about it? What have we learned? What, what are we using it? elsewhere yeah. in town? What are other ponds using? Mm -hmm. Where's there been success? Yeah. Yeah. With any of these I'd love to say. Um okay. You know, but I'm fixated on bottom ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> well maybe you need more information on there, but Besides the numerous drawbacks, in fact, that best if applied in very small areas on one acre, why would we even, why would we think that was something we want to consider? Yeah. Plus, the fact it's something very expensive, too. I think it was like $90,000 per acre or something, which. Yeah, I, mean, I don't want to jump the gun here. I'm trying to make this more manageable than. Yeah. Right. So, I would vote against it. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to, Jeff, do you want to turn that Just at that intersection of getting beyond short term fixes to our longer term charge and trying to refine a little bit, I would agree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is short term and small scale. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Is it going to take, I'm curious, is it going to take um, a compilation of a bunch of these to, to deal? Because I, you know, there's four different habitats here. Is each one going to require a different solution? Is the shoreline going to require? You know, I read somewhere in here there could be volunteer activity where you put plastic down and you kill off the, you know, that. I mean, is that, are we going to require a bunch of solutions to deal with this? 
<clears throat> like it's not, we're not going to say like, okay, our, our thing is that one, we're going to apply it to all 54 acres and it's going to solve the problem. That's a, that's a good point. That's a very good point because it's true. There are things along the shore you might want to be covered in a, in a short spot. That's true. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it felt like they were putting together a whole bunch of ideas for different areas. Yeah, and, and, and it's not, yeah, it's not every, it's not, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Oh, oh, I was going to say they kind of called out specifically the combat access point as a place that could be it could be useful having insurance in there. But yes, I would love sure it's a mess up at the end of the game there. So, so potentially it sounds like bottom, bottom ceiling certainly not a major solution, yeah. but it's not something we want to remove for purposes of maybe targeted areas or it might be something that yeah. 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 it sounds like shoreline. So yeah, yeah. Shoreline. Sure. yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we haven't you know, spoken to drawdown. Um, so, does anyone want to chime in on that or moderation and motivation at a piece? You haven't talked about yet, Liz. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Full of questions today. So, I know one of the big, um, one of the things that they talked about was ice rip and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but they're not necessarily being as much freezing in the ponds as maybe there was 12 years ago. Um, like it didn't again <laughs> to the draw that option change. Um, they also talked about um the operations plan. Now I don't understand my own saying Oh, that there was a lot of relevant data already collected for the operations plan. Is that data still relevant? Like would we have to recollect data on that? Um, again, I think these are more like if we're going to research these, these are the questions I have. Mm -hmm. um, and also, it said that within it, they had um, that there was a minor drawdown of leaf control. Um, and I, I was just curious to know more about that. And oh, this is just a, a, um, like how often does drawdown have to happen? Like, is it like once you do it a couple of times, you're done, or is it something that is a I mean, I'm, I'm a little familiar with I me, mean, maybe it must be a more familiar than I do, uh, but um, with harvest, uh, a bear hill pond, which is large, I mean, um, they draw down virtually every year. They didn't do it this year because they had trouble with, the, uh, with their system, but virtually it's every year it's just draw, it's a drawdown. I'm not sure it's true in other places. Mm -hmm. They said somewhere that that NASA lake in Westford used it as well, and they've been doing that for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not, I don't remember how often they said they uh, had a drawdown. And it sounds like that's another shoreline focused solution. Well, so it takes your invasive and, and, and water, water. I think water lowers, you know, some of the, some of the most shallow water species. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. There's yeah. shallow areas in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that was my question too. So, has that been tested? It's been quite a long time since the plan was written and has has content the time. Mm -hmm. so that's effectively what would happen in a thing that would be moved. It would be sort of a drop down. Sorry, so I can't get a couple yeah. of feet, right? It's just, I think two to three feet is what the draw down is. Yeah. So just start off sort of small. Well, normally, what would you draw down? But isn't, wasn't there a regulation about no more than three feet in the state right now? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's up to three feet that um, BP Apparently used to allow more, and at Bear Hill Pond they do do more. It's a deeper system. Oh, right. They've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. With some effectiveness, um, as I understand it, they don't routinely uh, allow greater than three foot drawdowns. Mm, yeah. Because of the impacts to fish, fish and amphibians, um, yeah. mm -hmm. And if you haven't answered to Ann's question in terms of mm -hmm. whether this has been tried at all. At Warner's Pond, that's the question. But a drawdown has been tried. I'm not familiar with it ever being tried. I know that there's the outlet and hole structure, um, but it wasn't intended. It was intended for flood control, um, and I don't think it's ever been used. Uh, there, there is that picture. Sorry, there is that, that chart that shows that picture of what the drawdown would look like in, in the report. Uh, mm -hmm. at, at, at a, was there three feet? Was that a three feet drawdown in the in the on that? Your report. Uh, uh, I think it feels like the five. Was it five? Or maybe show both. Maybe show three out of five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. the bigger, 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 bigger,
three to be two to four hundred. I guess it's three to five each. Three to five each. Yeah. And then we'll. Does the three to five each the top of page 44 says um drawdowns benefit plans with rapid drop off to great debts. They tend to benefit most from drawdown due to the shallow symmetry of much more than drawdown is only likely to provide limited control of water for this bankrupt. So it's, it seems to me in that that's a huh. well which which is something which would be a consideration is if we were to actually dredge the pond to get deeper. Suddenly, we then draw down different types as a combination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think you can maybe keep an uh, important point you're raising is actually we we should be looking at some of these short term options that are part of the package in the context of what the future would look like, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Different scenarios, right? Yeah. Not what it was like just evaluating in this context. Okay. Um, any other kind of questions or points people want to make about these short term um, short term options on the screen here? The hydro raking renovation described as recommended only for under controlled water lilies. Is there is that major target? Just again trying to get yeah, focus if we can mm -hmm. and all of that one that would really bring any benefit. And while the other costs of stirring up, breaking up the species that reproduce vegetatively. That, that seems like that. Yeah. Yeah. So either a question that we could be look at moving forward. Does anyone have reactions to that? I I I think you did. I I, think, I thought Keith, you said something about about the hydro rig. Didn't you thought there was some use to this or something? But yeah, I'm not a water lily expert. Yeah, yeah but I'm thinking more than I'm thinking more than the milfoil. I mean, that's the problem, right? Because you, you, it might get rid of the uh, the water lilies, but then you have the milfoil all chopped up and thrown throughout the pond, and that that grows other places. I think that is a that was thinking if you do it in the winter time, the milfoil will be gone and we'll just keep disturbing the roots. Huh. I'm thinking not spread quite the same way. Huh. And, much at all. It's not the milfoil. Essentially, they essentially say it's pretty much entirely covered. Mm -hmm. It's not like there's any places they can swear. Hmm. I feel like I read that somewhere. Yeah, I like, to make that up. But again, like I feel like to, I think you were just saying it's like you see like kind of not the big things. These are small patches, much like the uh, bottom ceiling that we probably want to know our options, but they're not going to be sort mm -hmm. of the we need to know a lot of detail about this because it's going to be a big solve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, well, why don't we do the press forward yeah. um, to the next set of options? Yeah, so chairs agree. Okay, yeah. Um, so let's move to the next slide here. Um, so these are the um, the two long term man management recommendations that were named, and I think just to state the obvious, there was no um, dam removal long term option considered as part of it. So obviously, that's something in our mandate for us to, to look at. Um, but in terms of in terms of these ones, you know, we, they talk about control. Nutrient and sediment load, sediment loading through resident education, through stormwater techniques. And I think and that recommendation is named as you know, important and you know something that should be pursued, but also noted in the context of just a very significant need for phosphorus reductions um, that you know would, would not likely to be achieved through education alone. Right. Yeah, and I think I remember in this um report that they said the watershed is so big yeah that we and it's mostly i think 92 percent outside of Concord. So yeah is it really not even something to educate right. people in five other towns yes right right um and then in terms of dredging right um there were a number of, cons number of considerations they did the report includes about dry versus hydraulic dredging and sort of the differences there um, it talks about issues related to watering location and technique that's used. Um, and a key questions are on how much material are you actually removing, right? It makes a huge difference in terms of cost and feasibility, but also impact. Um, issues around the types of disposal or reuse, which depends on you know, what's, what's possible, depends on the chemical content of the material. Um, I mentioned sort of the scale of the project, and then um, also the report notes sort of permitting and design costs. Um, as part of the consideration. So 
I guess the, the question on these is, you know, um, what were folks' reaction to the reports, recommendations on these pieces, right? Um, kind of key things that jumped at you in terms of you know, questions or gaps that we would need to fill um, to for our consideration. Well, I, don't know. I, I, I think dredging will probably require at least maybe a full meeting or a half meeting for us to have an in-depth discussion about that. Okay. Um, uh, you know, there, there are so many acres, not was not the whole pond. Uh, uh, we should really spend some time looking at, at, at that. That's a, that's a significant. That's really significant. Yeah. And I, and I and I don't I don't know what you know what I would say today about it. it just seems I, I can understand why it's interesting. It is interesting, fascinating thing. I'd love to know all the details about that. Have that presented in front of us to someone. I think other people have thoughts about this. I know Keith, you had thoughts about it. others had ideas. About it. I think you were. We're presenting that as a major major part of one of our meetings. There's a separate discussion to be had after this. What is the what is the final list? And there are probably three or four dredging out there. We probably, yeah. probably have one option, right? And dam yeah. removal. And yeah. so this isn't. I think we're just going over the old list. Yeah. Um, but I, but I agree. Is this each one of these may require a separate meeting? Yeah. But let me get back to number one here. <laughs> Can we take that? This is totally infeasible. Yeah. To control okay. the machine one. Yeah, I agree. This, I don't this is what we need. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's great to ask people to do it. What, you know, it's just huge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's, yeah, yeah it's not going to solve our problem. Right. Okay. Right. The conclusion. So, so I, mean, I guess anyone it could solve the problem if right. we control the entire state and then yeah. the budget. So, can this is the I have a question which you many of you have I I I don't have this background. So the water that's coming in is loaded with phosphorus. Is that true? That's it's coming down down from from um from the source. It hits, but it's but it also moves through the, through the whole whole pond within within twenty four hours. So is the phosphorus is it is it dissolved in the water? Is it um uh does it settle in the sediments? What happens? I don't know. I don't understand how this all works. It's dissolved. It's dissolved. So, so, so accumulating so it accumulated. It does both. Yeah, I would think because of the farm fields that were there for so long, and there probably didn't used to be a buffer strip of vegetation. I have a feeling a lot of it got put into the pond when the farming was, you know, occurring there right to the water's edge. I mean, I, that's one of the questions I have is, you know, you also have the ice out pond upstream, and that's like a catch for a lot of things yeah. too. So it's a short run between there and Orange Pond relatively. I mean, how much loading really is occurring in this from the stream? I don't, there's a lot of assumptions that are made, but we don't really know. It was just modeled. And I, I work with people who do this for a living and they say modeling is is always wrong, but sometimes helpful. <laughs> it's, like a, it's an exercise to help understand something, but it's not 100% accurate. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to be careful with a lot of assumptions about the current loading of phosphorus into the pond right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Bill provide one other one perspective from Orr's work that yeah. you know over the last many decades, Orr's and folks in many other watersheds have worked on reducing nutrient input from wastewater treatment plants by yeah. Yeah. increasing, you know, screwing down on the limits and involving the EPA and Mass DP, et cetera, and have had great success with that. And towns have made huge investments in reducing uh, or improving their wastewater um, filtering and treatment. So, so there's less nutrients coming out of those wastewater, wastewater treatment. And so there's very stringent standards on that. And now the, the primary input of nitrogen and phosphorus is being suspended back into the water columns from these impoundments, from the old sediments that have you know, been deposited behind dams. And then through just natural activity, occasionally stirred up and remobilized in the water. So um, that's the okay. where the water quality focus on. Okay. And, and from a basic geology, I think we all get get this, but worth saying that basic uh, dynamics of it is the fast moving water can suspend more, there's more energy in the water, so it's holding sediment, and then you reach the still water and all that, just sort of not all of it, but the and of course, your material settles down, and some of those nutrients are attached. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, I, I don't know the answer to this, but I hear from uh, like the pollinator groups and um, 
some of the community groups that actually um, lawns are, have replaced farming <clears throat> as a major source of mm -hmm. phosphorus. I don't know whether that's true. I, I do, you know, hear it a lot. Yeah. Lawns, yeah. golf courses, uh, dog ways, animal ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the mass balance is impossible to calculate, yeah. but mm -hmm. sediments are a major source. Um, a budding septage and lawns are a source and input from the upstream mm -hmm. regions. Mm -hmm. But the can really be controlled yeah. Yeah, easily. Um, yeah. it, even with dredging, you know, the dredging option was only removing a small percentage of the pond sediments. So, whatever phosphorus source from the sediments. Unless you dredge the entire pond, which nobody ever suggested, you would, would cut out that source. So the best thing about the, the pond and its current state and future state is it's flushing. Mm -hmm. It is still an option. What's that? Dredging the whole pond is still an option. Mm -hmm. I, I would take it off the table. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Mm -hmm. You would take it off that table? I, I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. Well, until we look at the criteria. Gotcha. Could I just ask one more question? I don't think I remember seeing anything in here that defines how long long term it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've looked at the dredging. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. well, the dredging, I did see something that said, um, said like about 100 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. That was that was, if I recall, that was based on um, the modeled volume of sediment uh, coming in, and and the thirty five thousand yards that was coming out, okay. and how long that thirty five thousand yards would take to replenish. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I actually have another question then, because I know that um, it's a long pond and active was dredged. So what effect does that have on the water flowing through? I mean, that, that water was, I mean, that pond was dredged and that was cleaned out. Um, hmm. You're saying it's going to be probably better now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about the, what about the sediments? What about the phosphorus? Um, yeah, the is, that, is that, um, I guess, are, the, they, are they still flowing through as quickly, as easily? Is that, what effect has that had on one pond? I mean, it's it's something to to look at. It's been done, been dredged. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'd like to understand that a little bit more as well. Mm -hmm. So, sounds like Long Pond it would be worth looking into for your perspective, and I maybe just perhaps. I mean, ice house, house yeah. pond. Ice house pond. I'm so sorry. Yes, yeah, ice can, house pond. Can we look at examples of where similar things have happened? Right. With the impact. Right. Okay. I have another question about the center, about the center build up, and this is again naive. I, I always picture when you have a dam, the, the water flows in, hits the dam, and drops the sediment right by the dam. And that doesn't happen here. So it's, it, it seems to be dropped uh, where the where the where the, the two the two brooks come into come into the pond, right? So on the on the, on the northwest side, when the river comes in, it goes through this this very sinuous um, channel, or, you know, uh, of the brook, and then it's a it's a a wetland system. The, it's everything slows down, so the brook is sort of flowing narrowly with all these suspended sediments yeah. and associated attached, you know, nutrients, and then it hits that wetland system, and everything then drops. Drops the there. The sediments are dropped at the north yeah. west side, but then they are moved through the pond with the with the sort of the, the flush of weight. But it's a lot slower once it gets into the pond. Into Okay. So it is mostly the same. Oh, there at the at the, at the entrance of the two of the brook. So is this? I'm just. I mean, checking. Is this something that folks would like to learn a little more about? Sort of like the actual mechanics of how the sun and how the nutrients get trapped in the pond, and learning as much as we can about you know the specific of this pond, how that works. Right. Given some I mean, of the key characteristics that yeah. the report makes. I think it's in this report. Um, there's so much. Phosphorus that's bound up in, that is in the sediments within the system. Mm -hmm. That in some ways the amounts, the loading that's coming into the ponds is just adding to it. But there's so much loading currently in the sediments that that has to be addressed from a water quality standpoint to see it. 
so that you see that reduction in the you know the aquatic units and um, you know, shell list is a bit addressed by uh, it's, they're two separate things. Yeah. But the the dredging wouldn't have touched the area where the where the major drop in the, the sediment was, was taking place. But at least not as it's presently configured. Okay. Well, because yeah, it's interesting because the I think the dredging isn't trying to solve the, that problem or the phosphorus because we're saying it's coming in right, right, right. into the pond right. elsewhere. It's the sediment's coming from elsewhere. What we're trying to do is solve the plant species and the depth of this pond. You know, yeah. In other forever. But I think of this, so the phosphorus still gets stored in the sediment, so if you dredge it, it doesn't effectively remove Correct. old phosphorus. Oh, yeah, but That's the new stuff is still coming in, right? Well, we're, well, we're assuming there's some. For a hundred We don't years. know, which is... Because yeah, that's what your point was, is we don't know what's yeah. coming correct, in. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dealey. The, the direction was never designed to remove phosphorus. It was designed to just increase depth so that it decreased plant plant growth in those areas in those areas. I it, mean, I think it, it, it I think it's it, both. It, it, you know, it's right. It only stick a small are, amount of sediments. You know, well, thirty five thousand yards. Which was a small percentage. It's a small percentage of the pond set. So, so most of the pond could still be there. Right. The so it's over about six acres of you know the fifty nine acre ponds, which includes the yeah. islands. Mm -hmm. so, so the main purpose was to, to decrease the uh right. increase the water was, depth. It was to, to increase, increase the water depth so that you in, in those, are, in those depth areas. the sunlight would not mm -hmm. right. penetrate to the bottom and that would preclude additional plant growth in those areas. In those areas, yeah. Right. Um, so I just want to note, note, you know, I think we're we're definitely going to talk a lot more about dredging. I think we've, we've heard that, and you know, clearly a uh, topic we need to dig a lot more into. Um, for purposes of sort of today's discussion, I'm curious, anything else someone wants to sort of draw specifically out about the 2012 report um, that you feel like really bears mentioning now before we move on yeah Liz. It, it, it's just a clarification point so i just want to the the area that they discussed here and the kind of small scaled down area is different than the one that was in the alternative analysis correct because this says the scale down would be kind of between scout island pond street and Cobb Ave. is that a different kind of so and is this this is different because we just were looking at the the, the boat launch area. Oh, okay. because Jerome had not yet. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I was looking at it right. Okay. And then the alternatives analysis didn't look at different dredging areas. Um, what it looks at more the same dredging, so at Jerome and at the boat launch, okay. but rather than taking the sediment out of the pond and disposing of it, which was very costly, um, we looked at moving the sediments within the ponds. Oh, okay. So take away that cost. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, so the answer to the, the question is this is not exactly an apple to apples comparison from 2012 before the dredging analysis versus the alternative analysis. Or the yeah. 2018 yeah. feasibility study. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, Can I ask a question? Yeah, please. Um, so these are the 2012 management recommendations. What's our process of coming up with the final list to be evaluated? Is that is that a whole separate yeah. set of topics, or I mean, this is some input to it, but this, you know, yeah. there, there are other options. Oh, absolutely, right. yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes, yes. So, so yes. that's going to happen. That will happen. Yeah, yeah. There were, yeah, yeah. We're talking about uh, things that have, we haven't even discussed yet. Right. Right. Firms, things that people right. Right. So, we're really just taking care of what's already been You're doing what's there. there. Yeah, yeah. I understand. You know, we're sort of we're evaluating some of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's great. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. But yeah, our plan is definitely to kind of continue working through the documents that are kind of in our mandate. And then at that point, we'll, you know, begin the process of bringing in more research and then talking about things. You know, more specifically to what we might want to be attacking and evaluating those, right? Um, but yeah, this is still just the very beginning. And, and my, my opinion, Paul, has been that this will be the slowest part of our meetings where was, as we're going through these other documents, but that things will speed up once we have a handle on what, what, what is being done already. That's my hope. <laughs> You're not suggesting I'm patient. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Um, so, I guess, you know, I'm looking at the time, I think it'd be great to get to our criteria work group. Um, 
I just want to mean we didn't really spend much time on the options not recommended. Um, I think, you know, shading dye, chemical sediment treatment, plant competition, right, aeration. Um, I think if we need to spend more time on that moving forward, we certainly can. We're not, we're, we're here today, we're not throwing anything out, but, right? Um, so happy to spend more time on that as needed in the future. But I do think we had a, a work group that did a lot of really great work in advance of this meeting. So we should make sure we give them the time to, to share and then have a discussion on that. Um, so let's go to the, the next slide here. Um, so just as a reminder to everyone, um, we had, we asked Paul, Vicki, Liz, and Malcolm to review the Envision Concord criteria and think about how we should apply that criteria plus any other relevant criteria that they feel is applicable from um, in town documents to our review of alternatives for Warner's Palm. Um, so we asked them to identify the clear set of proposed criteria to guide our review, right? Um, and, and they did that. And so you all received a copy of it and we have handouts um, that I believe um, have been sent around. Looks like um, Julia is helping out with that right now. Um, so, I want to say we're going to talk about this for about 45 minutes. Um, we'll see how far we can get today. Um, I think it seems likely to me we might want to or need to continue this conversation, but that's fine. Um, but I think for today, you know, um, I wanted to give the group the floor so I can hand it to Vicki in a minute um, to, to share a little bit about what was the thinking behind this. And then we'll have a conversation about, you know, what we like, what what's missing or what you might add or amend. Um, and we can, we can go from there and see, you know, where there's alignment, where there's more wealth for us to build, build that alignment. So Vicki, I'll hand it to you. Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, so um, I would say we started with, we read the entire document before we came to our first meeting. We had a lot of email back and forth, even before our first meeting. And then we came to the first meeting. So that was, okay. that was good. Um, I think what was interesting is having read it all, I do find that we, I think we all agree that it had some very bold goals for the town, um, that a lot of effort was put into this. Clearly groups like this met and they talked about all of these things and they crafted a vision for Concord. And a lot of the things that are in Envision Concord, we have actually done in this town. Mm -hmm. There are more bicycles in this town. There are more, there's more connectivity. There's um, just a lot of what they had um, anticipated and looked forward to, the town has been doing. And so that was pretty impressive um, from that perspective. Um, I think we also noted the charge from what's in um, Envision Concord, mentioned a, and a lot of things that mentioned Warner's Pond, so we put that list here. And first one was our charge was to follow Envision Concord 2030. So like, oh, here we are, yeah. our reading is document. Um, one of the things that it says is that it is it should be the starting point for all town initiatives. So here we are with the town initiatives and we're using Vision Comfort. The other thing I just want to commend everybody is it does say that um, the conversations should be broad and should include more people. And so this process, I think, hooray, of course, because it does also meet that criteria. Um, it does then get to the place and we put, you know, I put it here so you could find it if you're interested. On pages seven and fifty-six of Envision Concord are the community criteria, which um, is what this we use to come up with the criteria. We put it to the same five categories, and then we put things that were outside the criteria outside. Um, Envision Concord says to increase natural resources in open space, preserve and expand stewardship, enhance recreation, provide equitable spending for all, enhance Warner's Pond. And we wrote down where we found Warner's Pond in the document so that you could find those things and be familiar with them. Um, implement Warner's Pond water management plan, restore Warner's Pond as part of recreation. There's a map of Warner's Pond. Um, page 197, Warner's Pond has ecological and recreational value. Um, I was supposed to take out increased recreation. Oh no, increased recreation on the Acevit and Neshoba Brook. Program open spaces. And it doesn't say Warner's Pond specifically, but it felt relevant. And then Warner's Pond is on the list of medium to long-term projects. So that's where we show up in this document. So then I go back to the five criteria. So the first criteria is history and character. And so we read through the sections on history and character. We looked up the recommendations on history and character and tried to apply them to one respond. And we came up with these four 
um, suggestions for criteria that we could use here, which is the first one being, will the art option have an impact on the historical character of the pond? And we add a you know, dam or the island. You know, there are a few things you could add to that, but it's really about, because it's like, is it a pond? Will it be a pond? Is it a, whatever it is, but um, it will it have an impact on the historical character of filling blank? Will the option have a significant visual impact of the area and landscape? Because that was a criteria that we should improve um, the landscape. Will it impact the history or importance and uses of Scout Island? Um, and will this option improve the quality and quantity of open space? Again, the criteria was to improve the quality and quantity of open space. So will we be doing that in this option? Should I just keep going? Or do you want to do section by section? Totally up to you guys. I'm um, just saying that it was, it was a little hard for our group to define what the what was meant by character. Yeah. So we used a little uh, poetic license. And sort of mm -hmm. They had some definitions within it, but kind of like use a kind of thought for trying to yeah. figure out how character fit. Does that make sense? Okay. okay. We can come back to any so livability and values. This was another one where we felt like in the beginning it was like nothing fit in there, but then everything fit in there. So um, it was really good to have the conversation. Um, so we start with will this option increase the quality and qual quality and quantity, I should say, um, of re recreational assets for the town? Will this option allow for greater programming of the open space and recreation? Will it provide equitable solutions to all socioeconomic groups? That came up a few times in Envision Conquer that we should be equitable. And so we talk a little bit about what's equitable mean and it does go to define um, economically equitable. Like it does talk about spending being equitable, equitable to socioeconomic groups. So we should just think about equity in the um, option. Will this address multi-generational resources and options for their use? It does talk about the, you know, the vision for Concord is that it is um, a good place to live for all ages. Um, will this affect public enjoyment and use of the pond? Will it affect the quantity and quality of conservation land? This wasn't clear exactly like what that means um, because it's not truly town conservation land, but that is one of the criteria in the vision of Concord. Oh, but, but it, it is, it is truly yeah. town conservation. The whole thing is town conservation. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so there it is. It's normal. <laughs> we, we didn't know. Um, will this option enhance physical and social gather, like i.e. gathering opportunities for the community? We did talk about this a little bit. What does that mean to be um, enhancing social opportunities? And what we came up with was that it will allow for more social gathering, both physical and you could sit and talk to more people. There'd be more, more opportunities to have social space than the public. Um, will this option have an impact on public health? Like, you know, because that is one of the criteria, but then we define it a little bit more like mosquitoes, diseases, contaminants, like what is the public health impact of this option? Yeah. Okay. Question stopping. Um, mobility and accessibility. Um, so will the option maintain or increase connectivity to the town centers, bikes, and trails? And will it improve access to the water body and landscape for pedestrians, bikes, and cars? And will it increase accessibility of the water body and landscape to all mobilities and ages? For example, is it ADA accessible, whatever we're proposing? Um, that was the mobility and accessibility. Um, ecological sustainable. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I was saying good. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Give me a pat on the back. Um, all right. This is the longest discussion we had, as you can imagine. So, ecological sustainability is one of the five criteria. So, will this option enhance the ecology and biodiversity of the resultant water body and adjacent land? And then fill in again, will it do it for the wildlife abundance and diversity? Will it do it for the plant life? Will it do it for the water quality? Will it do it for the habitat? So, you know, fill in ecology and biodiversity with those other things and apply it to those other um, pieces. Will this option provide a sustainable ecological so solution over time? Will it have a positive impact on fish abundance and diversity? Will it increase the likelihood for native versus invasive species, fish, and plants? Will this option have a positive or negative impact on greenhouse gas emissions and carbon sequestering? 
which are goals again of uh, Vision Concord, uh, will it improve the resilience of the habitat, for example, flooding risk? Um, will it impact the resilience of the community infrastructure, like roads and houses? Will this option have an impact on the downstream system, like chemicals, fish, and flooding? The flooding comes up twice, so that's why we bolded it. Maybe we can take something out. Um, will this have an impact on contaminant levels in the water and land? And this kind of goes with H because the downstream system also contaminant levels in both. Um, and will it increase the dependence on synthetic chemicals? So that's the, the ecological sustainability criteria that we found for the vision bucket. Okay. Fiscal sustainability. So what we wanted to say here is really there's a really good checklist in the fiscal um, portion of this that we could just use, but we just tried to narrow it down into three things, you know, which seem obvious, but there is a checklist in here. Um, but will it meet the town's fiscal criteria as outlined in the checklist? You know, that is where it's all outlined. Um, is it feasible from a technological and engineering perspective, short and long term? And are there alternative funding sources available for this option? So those were the big criteria. Then we, so that was the five criteria. Stop for a second. Um, then we had discussions of things that were outside of the criteria. We're gonna make sure we didn't try to mix it all up, um, but we thought they were, they kept coming up for us. Is that, um, are there costs of this option? Are they known or predictable within reasonable accuracy? Like how are we applying cost um, predictions for each of these? And what is the MCI impact on this option? We felt like that could never have been envisioned here mm -hmm. in Envision Comfort. Mm -hmm. So how do we think about it as we discuss our um, work? Are there unintended consequences to these options and how in the world do we evaluate that? And we kind of figured we can evaluate them, but it felt like something we didn't want to throw away quite yet. We could throw it out, but um, True. it did come up. Um, the most important one in many ways are how are we going to evaluate according to this criteria? Like, are we going to set a line that says, you know, from zero to five, zero being negative impact, three being no impact, five being positive impact, or are we going to say yes or no? Or are we like, what are we going to do once we have the criteria? Because that's a whole other effort. Right? It's not that simple. Um, and then we just outlined where some of the sustainability items are then reiterated was in the um, conquered sustainability goals and history. So that is the only other reading item you asked us to be what other yes, yes. five. It kind of really confirmed. Yeah, so essentially the conquered conquer is like follow the sustainability principles. Yeah, so yeah. that's the thing. Okay. Yeah, great. Well, thank you. Yeah, 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 thank you. Couple of comments. We um, there are a lot of criteria, and we may we may no attempt to prioritize the criteria. Uh -huh. I mean, some are obviously more important than others, so there may be a winnowing down of these when we actually apply those um, most important ones. And as Vicky said, we've made no attempt to figure out exactly how we're going to apply this. But beyond the scoring system, in my mind, is how does this group take a set of whatever options, take a set of criteria. And evaluate them. And, you know how how we do that as a group. What the process of doing that? Yeah, you know that's that needs some thought. Um, and um, the last thing on fiscal, there's been a lot on fiscal issues, right? We probably wouldn't be here if there weren't cost right. issues with that, yeah. right? And so I, I think Vicky, the only thing I would say, number one on the other category at the mm -hmm. bottom. Um, we can't predict the costs. We're not cost estimators, we're not, and we're not going to look at these options that come up. But we're going to have to make some rough guess. So this is where the can we predict them with a reasonable degree of accuracy? And maybe it's just one versus another. So we're going to have to make some judgments as we evaluate these options on on the reasonableness of, of, of our predictions, because we are going to have to evaluate the option versus yeah. the short and long term. <laughs> Oh, that's not going to be easy to do, and we're not going to do it exact. Exactly, right. we have to make a stab at that. Right. Yeah. It's almost like Paul. I mean, what I'm hearing you say is sort of like for each of these criteria, we probably want some discussion about how well do the options perform on each of them, but then also what's our degree of certainty about how well we think it will perform. We 
kind of need to consider that across the board, certainly on fiscal issues, but potentially on others as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I do think it's going to be difficult because you could, you know, once we go through this criteria, and this would be great if whatever options we come up with meet all of the criteria, it would be terrific. But I also think, you know, I'm going to guess some, every, every one of us can, is going to have an opinion mm -hmm. of, um, does this option maintain the historical character of this place? Okay. Yeah, we'll subjective. What history? Yeah, yeah so we're going to yeah. talk about. It, there's still subjective yeah. uh, part answers to these. What feel like objective yeah. criteria? Yeah. And uh, we just uh, we did have some discussion, but then uh, put to one side uh, about the whole and uh, how we're going to measure these criteria and. And obviously, some of them are very qualitative, and some of them can be more quantitative. And, and at some point, we have to decide, do we want to do a blend of the two, or do we want to only go with quantitative things? Mm. That's, uh, yeah. But we, we skipped all of that. <laughs> 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 the checklist, the Mr. Cocker, in fact, you need some of my dear cabinet. Yeah. And three of the time, you need lower than me. There's the some mm -hmm. they try semi quantitative, albeit yeah. subjective applications. Like yes, no, what, how, how we mitigate it. Like yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's, yeah. but would it, I, I would say, but not from this question, though, Envision Concord doesn't limit it to quantitative items. I mean, it does yeah. say envision, the vision for Concord is qualitative and quantitative. Like, we are going to make a better place to live for all generations. Yeah, I, I don't know if you can quantify some of these things. So, I, I, what Envision Concord says we need to be doing is quality and quality of a place to serve. Great. I think it's important to note that if that is part of the guidance in Envision Concord, that that decision that they made should inform, right? How we be, you know, we, we should probably do that. Right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's deliberate that we're all sitting here so when the tomatoes are thrown like <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's, let's open it up now. Um, and I think yeah, I mean the shortest person. Yeah. I want to suggest maybe two domains of feedback to think about here um, for the group. Um, one is just you know on the substance, like what, what do you think about this list of criteria? Does, does it resonate? Um, you know, I, I hope that folks have also had a chance to look through Envision Concrete themselves and, and do some thinking about this, but do you agree this is sort of an effective adaptation or application of those criteria to our problem? Is there anything you want to add, amend, any questions you have? And then I think the other really important other question is about the process. Um, how do we want to use these? What do you think is going to be a useful way to go about it? Um, and I'll just I'll just say like um, we have some experienced co-chairs here, right? And and CBI also you know, has done, does a lot of work with groups trying to come to decisions using complex criteria like this. So you're not going to be on your own when figuring out how to do this um, and how to apply it, but your process thinking is going to be really important for us as we figure out how to move forward with these as a group. So we want that. Um, so I guess floor is open, you know, thoughts, reactions on the substance and the process. Yeah, go ahead. So my reaction is I did read through it, but I didn't think yeah. that it captured it and also brought some other good news to life. So I think that's great. I'm worried we're trying to boil the ocean yeah. uh, with this. Um, so, um, and that's why I was thinking, I, I, I couldn't see how I could consolidate any of that. I just mm -hmm. can't even envision that. But it did lead me to thinking of a proposal for processes. We do have some people who are quite expert in these various areas, mm -hmm. and perhaps we have subgroups that would get together who are really good at history or really good at livability and values, the ecological, and those groups uh, come up and maybe make recommendations on how they would score and hopefully maybe even consolidate the categories a bit, mm -hmm. uh, but, but leverage the expertise we've got one yeah. way we can go about it. It's very good. Thank you for that. Yeah, for my Essentially, anything that we were like, mm, maybe this is relevant, we put in. So there's definitely whittling that can be done probably here right now. Because um, essentially, we were like, I don't know, it's good to go out. And then we decided that if it felt like it could be a criteria, we mm -hmm. wanted it to be open up to the group yeah. as, as like a potential like 
can be one of the, one of the, the, the synthetic chemicals that have a little bit of back about that, and ultimately we're like, that this is, let's put it there and let the group decide. Mm -hmm. Great. So I felt like no offense to be taken if you think something should. Yes. Be yeah. 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 Go ahead, Bob. I, I strongly support what David was saying. I think so. Again, it's a matrix of a number of alternatives and a number of criteria. So you, the two ways to organize: you can have groups who are looking at taking each criteria, uh, each option, and evaluating these criteria, or kind of criteria groups that get the option. I think the way the expertise probably. There's a range in here. I think David's suggested that there are people that are ecologically oriented or history oriented or fiscally oriented, or maybe they're reorganized along that. And then those groups take a look at each of the options. Um, mm -hmm. particularly. So um, so that, that might actually break down some initial biases we might have towards an option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we organize by criteria. But that means coming up with yeah. options. Mm -hmm. Coming up with the options first. Well, well, yeah. Well, we have to do the options, mm -hmm. group, but once we have those, yeah. yeah if you have a group yeah. that's, yeah. if we look at each one of these on the ecological filter, we look at each one of these on the fiscal filter. Yeah. I think that yeah. also ensures sure that everyone has an understanding of all the tension, like mm -hmm. rather than have like one deep understanding of one option versus. Yeah, I agree. I think we have to have a, a deep understanding of all the options that we finally yeah. evaluate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, David. So, um, trying to compose this. Uh, the, what I'm hearing in terms of the options is it's so mix and match mm -hmm. with the options that I almost think it needs to be driven from the other side. And what are we going, you know, what are we going to try to achieve from Envision Conquer? Say, hey, some of these things we're not trying to achieve, other things we are, and then be then driving the options from that. I get let me try to give, give a concrete. If we say it's really important to have X number of acres for fishing, that's going to drive us to certain solutions uh, that would give them you know maximum volume of water there. If let's say we said, hey, we want to make Scout Island more accessible, well, maybe putting in the berms is going to be the option that, or a bridge that is going to drive that. So I'm, I'm just thinking we got to go more starting with what are our objectives and then go back and look at these options because I, I, I just don't know how we can do it from the options. I, I agree with you. I'm, I'm thinking maybe we should start with these specific pages where one or two is mentioned. And we go from there. How do we apply this criteria to those specific things that are called out? Right. That's what I'm saying. Is start with that, and and then go right. to say what options will help us achieve the things that how we want to apply the envision conquer no longer. You sort of say it's sort of the yeah, not, not everything in the town is part of our social safety. It's document. So, order of pockets. So, I think we should really be careful how we yeah. apply this. Yeah. Another sort of related idea here is to consider what are the deficiencies in the status quo looking through this slide. So, again, assume the base case is nothing happens or a continuation of, of what's been happening happens. And then we try to envision what are the problems, what, what, what are the things that are going to be lost, and how, how do those things get addressed, and what priority is needed to address? It. So, kind of trying to decide what problem it is that it really wants to be fixed or needs to be fixed here is, is, is a way of, of kind of focusing the, the efforts rather than. You know, just saying, well, what if we graduate? What if we move? You know, we, instead of assuming the the action, really focusing on what are we thinking the the, the problems are that are going to occur. That you know, whether they're driven by this or not. And that just one related thought that I had, according to that, is we we have the twenty twelve management plan and. Maybe we should ask ourselves the question of 
you know, it's 12 years down the road from that management plan. How effective has that been? Was it was it implemented in a way that it gave it a chance to succeed or not? So, you know, it's an example of an attempt to do something about the pond. And we could sort of evaluate the success of that and what, what was expended on that and, and look at that as the way as at least one example of what do we want to make sure either does or does not happen in the next you know decade or 20 year time frame. So thinking out over those time frames again might be a way to own the, the the options that we can give you. Thanks. Go ahead. Yeah, to so those broader points, um, I mentioned at the last meeting, I'm looking forward to incorporating the more recent alternatives analysis that was yeah. moving, which addresses some of the more current concerns and lays out some alternatives for addressing those. We have additional alternatives, which is reviewed in the 2012 report. So I guess my way I've seen a, a questions like this addressed are, what are we trying to solve for? What are our alternatives? And then decide which is the preferred alternative <laughs> based on these criteria. Um, so if we continue with it along those lines, so yeah, that would be just my point that I looking forward to updating our conversation for the work that's been done in the last couple of years. Um, and then when the alternatives are on the table to address the deficiencies we're looking to address, then running each of those alternatives through this great set of, um, of criteria mm -hmm. would be the, the great way to do it. And thank you, Toby, for mentioning that CBI has worked with these systems. I've done things called multi-criteria decision analysis, which is essentially mm -hmm. yeah. straightforward scoring based on these criteria. But we can also weight criteria against each other. Do we think some of these deserve twice as many points as another one? Because you know, this one's important, but we think these others are more important. And then relative to the, some of these are going to be objective based on as much data as we can collect. Like this one will have more trail, that one will have less trail, this one is likely going to be more expensive than that one. Some will definitely be subjective. And do we, um, do we all, you know, we could all sort of vote on things and we all sort of express our evaluation of something and that gets averaged or combined somehow. We're also charged with involving the public in, in uh, gathering mm -hmm. feedback from the public so there could be an element of, of public input on this as well. Great. Um, while I have the mic, sorry, the, um, one thing <coughs> I'd suggest is the criteria that we select be expressed in a in a consistent scale, so up is good. Um, uh, one that jumped out to me, and I, and I get it, we'll just kind of work on the language, but um, will this option increase the dependence on synthetic chemicals? If we can sort of, you know, increase the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. say that we sort of work on it, we say, oh, well, that's a five instead of a one, and that we would have a consistent mm -hmm. sort of idea mm -hmm. of how that works. Yeah. Um, yeah. Great. Okay. Can I say something about the broadness of the criteria? Please think, go ahead. Um, yeah. I think it is important to keep a keep the criteria fairly broad. Right. Kind of sort of like you know, the things as specific as we want to make sure we have as much water and as much fishing ability. I think you run the risk of tailoring criteria to a specific option. Yeah. Um, so I think that is part of I think our reasoning as a group to keep it fairly broad because we don't. You know, we don't know all the options. We want to be careful about like having to that really provide everything. Um, one of the things we talked about, like briefly, language wise, is like we all kind of default to saying the pond, but maybe we should find other, like I mean, that's sort of thing he was getting to, like pond slash this. Like maybe we just call it Warner's Land or, you know, um, in order to kind of make sure we're not tailoring things and trying yeah. to figure out how to talk about these things broadly and have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would add to the, I think our, there was an initial um, uh, jump into all people weighing the criteria, which ended up being bad for us. It was like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, 
it started to get into, you know, some, there was like this whole push to be like, well, let's just start with ecology because that's the most important thing here. And we're like, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Yeah. I don't agree with that. And so it ended up like going into a spiral that we didn't need to go into mm -hmm. because Envision Concord has five things. And the number one thing is history. Let's start with history. Like let's not apply personal filters over this document right away, I guess. Like, that would be my um, one warning, because we did try it, and it did not mm -hmm. send us into a good place. I think that's when we like, sent you stuff, and we're like, what are we doing? And how do we get go from here? It almost, it almost like, killed the process. Yeah. And then we got back to a place, and we're like, oh, I get it now. Yeah. We're applying this document to the yeah. criteria. So I'm just sending that out as a, yeah. we lived through that. Group. You remember some of the, some of the criteria there may be warring criteria. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because one could say that the history and character of the pond takes you one direction, and other criteria takes another direction. Fiscal criteria takes another direction. Um, I think it would be very useful to have groups form to further evaluate before we apply them to kind of look at the criteria to kind of get them on the same basis, you know, the same scale, and to see whether. Even they're, they're reasonable. I look at one here, um, which I like. You know, this is increase of public enjoyment of the pot. Well, one person's enjoyment is another person's detriment, and, and one person's pot is another person's creek. And so, yeah. some of these are, you know, we have we need more work before we jump into these. So, I think I think we made a great start. That's all, <laughs> that's all we did. So, so, um, I mean, Rick, I see the hand, so go ahead and then I'll- I just it. wanted to, I think uh, Mark and Jeff expressed, but I wanted to express much mm -hmm. more clearly, so just so if you think I was trying to say something different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I guess, you know, there's nothing like working with the system to help you understand the system. Mm -hmm. And when I'm, what I'm kind of, the idea that I'm having here is, if we assumed that we were not going to try to change or do much of anything for a while, a certain set of things are going to unfold over time. And, you know, running the exercise of just saying, what do we think is going to happen with respect to these criteria if, you know, if nothing happened, if the base case was, was sort of no change, that gives us a starting point for trying to understand what the impacts of any given action is. Um, mm -hmm. as, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and I think potentially runs to this is confusing what, what Vicky was talking about, which is somebody certainly said, well, automatically ecology is the most well, how fast is ecology going to degrade if nothing is done? It's kind of a really reasonable question. Well, in, in fact, in the latest alternatives analysis, the no action alternatives, you know, that was yeah. that's, a, that's a viable option to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and to your point, how the yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it gives us sort of. I, I, I always tend to think of you know base case, full case, mock fair case kind of yeah. you know what happens if you if, if things go well or things go poorly. Well, what I like about this idea, which I hadn't really digested in um, in terms of, but I, what I think is interesting about it is it would surface the things we're trying to solve because yeah. if you didn't know action alternative, you'd be like, oh my god, no, because this horrible thing would happen, and you'd be like, okay, that's something we need to solve. If we think that's a horrible thing, our outcome of doing nothing, suddenly that's something we need to solve. And it would not provide for access for all generations. We'd be like, oh no, we need to solve that in whatever option we come up with. So it might raise to the surface things we believe we need to solve. It, it, it also potentially addresses some existing conditions and questions like the dredging question and you know and the phosphorus question. I mean, there's there's an input of phosphorus coming from the water sources that are flowing in. There's some output of phosphorus that's that's coming out the other end, and then there's potentially a, a repository in the middle. And just answering the question of is that repository growing or shrinking or what's happening to it. Might be an interesting question because it, I mean, obviously, if there's you know, let's say people have stopped using phosphorus upstream and there's very little coming in now, 
and maybe dredging out what's there has a magically beautiful effect on plant life. Or maybe there's no hope because there's so much flowing in that no matter what you do, it's going to, going to replenish in a matter of a short period of time. I, I'm I'm at a loss to understand which of those cases are either mm -hmm. of those cases are more near true. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think well, that's key. has a pretty extensive data set and actually have, and I've been able to map a lot of the upstream and downstream comparisons. I'd be happy to share that with the counselors. It gets a little dense. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the level of understanding is there. I so I'll just throw that out there as an option. Little one is a little Yeah, so you can compare the phosphorus level in the water and actin versus the Right. I mean, that's the sort of the basic question is is it some sort of equilibrium or is it getting better or getting worse? I mean, just direction. Yeah. Um, to the point of, you know, oh, it's good. These are what people compare yeah. to the oxygen, temperature, yeah. the water. Yeah. So I, I'll go back. I, I, I think this is a fantastic document, and I, I don't think we're ready yet to know how to, how to apply it. Or, but I would love us to, ex to, to have an exercise with it by, back to my thought about this. Looking at the, at the next report, which we haven't looked at in depth, the 2018 report, which is the dredging, the, the, the dredging option, right? Spend time with that, and then, and then, for us, just to have an exercise, use the, use the criteria and think about it in relation to that to that report and see what we we discovered. We're not gonna, we're not going to make a final conclusion, but we're going to look at it. We're going to look at this and see how it works. Then we should do the same thing with the alternatives analysis and do and do the same thing. It'll probably raise a lot of questions for us and where to go next, etc. But that's that's how I would love to see us go forward. I'm you mean this it. document, the alternative, this one, alternative analysis report, which does all the alternatives. Right? Yes, yes, yes. It does dredging. But before you go to that, I'd like to I'd like to look at the dredging one. You know, the oh, 2018, right. yeah, the 2018, which is okay. halfway between. It's like six years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See what it has to tell us, and then and then um, and then look at the criteria again. And then and and there may be things we that we, we can say as we look at, at the dredging option. Well, they didn't think about this, they didn't think about that. We can work that through a little bit further and then move from there to the next. I, I'm I'm also drawn back, I'll stop talking to this. I'm drawn back to Paul's original comment about uh what is the long term. Because it seems to me that is gonna be the big question, is you know, is the long term. And it's 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 uh, look, the, the, the long term is either you do nothing or you do minor maintenance things every year, right? Or we're gonna, or we're gonna be dredging, or we're gonna be um, uh, removing the dam. Those are, those are the three long, I think, the three long term things, aren't they? Coming up for us. Um, so, uh, and I think we have to. That's just there it is, and we have to just uh, look at all three. So that's how I would go next. I, I would yeah. definitely look forward to the dredging, the dredging in uh, 2018. See what it says. I don't know what people think. I may be wrong on that entirely. No, I agree. I think there's so much more that we need to understand about the dredging mm -hmm. before we can make any, you know, any move on that and understand, you know, what's going on with it or what was proposed and what did the 2018, um, you know, report have to say. Yeah. I think that makes a whole lot of sense to try to understand that more. And then, like you said, then we need to understand, you know, what about the dam removal? Yeah. So weren't there modifications made to the dredging proposal in this? There, there was in the alternative analysis report. So after we're done that, we can look at the next one, which yeah. is. So then redo, redo the. Yeah, because it'll, be, it'll be smaller. It'll be, it'll be like they're going to put, put the okay. material into another place. Okay, so I want to yeah. get to Paul, and then I want to do a little bit of an effort of kind of taking stock of where we are and clarifying what we want to do next. Um, so go ahead, Paul. If, if, if what you're saying, Bill, is. Um, Let's do a test case of you know, taking an, an alternative and applying these criteria and dredging yeah. would be a good place. I endorse that, but I think that should be done with a, a, a another work group rather than the entire group. Oh. To have a group run away and do that and present it to the, the entire group uh, with a thoughtful analysis and <laughs> the test uh, I don't know. I'm not a, <laughs> I don't know. No, but I, I think that. As an experiment, mm -hmm. that would be best done with a smaller okay. Yeah, to present to the larger group and we can cut through tomatoes. As long as nobody walks away thinking 
that, that is the, that is the analysis of judging because right, right, right. it's not right. right. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's more to think of it as an analysis criteria. Yeah, yeah. 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 we have that. I mean, right. we didn't say we're not into something else. Yeah. Or is we want to know how it's Yeah, and like and like I think you were mentioning, like, did we miss something? Like, are we looking at this? Me like. There's a giant thing about driving that isn't reflected anywhere. Um, so it was a great, great conversation. Um, Want to take a stab at just sort of naming a couple of the key pieces I think that came up here um, that I think are worth just noting. Um, one of the key kind of threshold questions we talked about was, are we want, do we want to just be quantitative? We want to be a combination of qualitative and quantitative. There was a suggestion that maybe this is resolved in and conquered and saying that we, we shouldn't be just quantitative, um, so it says to do both. Um, there were some questions, uh, a suggestion that, you know, maybe an approach that could be really useful would be to have some work groups focused on these substantive areas that run the different options through that substantive area, the criteria, and sort of report back to the group, because we have experts on different topics in this group that should be helpful. But then that raised the question, well, how do we decide what options to run through the criteria? And we had a really nice, rich conversation about that. People saying, well, we should turn to our objectives and figure out, use those to guide our decision-making on what the options are. Other people saying we should look at Envision Concord. That kind of pretty clearly helps us think about what options we need to think about it. It's uh, something pretty explicitly. And others saying, well, let's look at the deficiencies in the status quo, right? And that can help us figure out what options to identify to solve for those. So I think those are all, Valuable suggestions that make you think about specifically how to use them. Um, another important thing I think came up that, you know, in addition to maybe rating these options against criteria, we need to think about the degree of uncertainty, right? Um, as another important measure, not just objectively how good does it perform, but how well do we know that it's going to perform that way? Um, we have a specific suggestion that we look at these criteria and adjust them by the same scale. So that's kind of apples to apples. They're all positive in some way and kind of asking for to what extent does it do X, right? Um, in a positive way. Um, and then this really interesting idea about maybe a good way forward for the kind of tech driving them, right? Maybe we do a little bit of an experiment um, and ask some folks in the group or do it as large as I think we can figure out how to do that. Um, to just see what it's like to use these and report back. Um, and you know, um, seems like an important part of that would be maybe that group isn't, you know, explicitly coming out with a score and evaluation. We don't want to kind of anchor the group in any way or give an impression that we're coming to some sort of task force opinion on it. But maybe it's more like they come back and share how it went, yeah. right? And what yeah. what worked well on the compare what might be missing. So I think you know the, the planning team certainly we can take a take a look and think about all those ideas that they're great um, and you know come back with some suggestions. I will just say you know we didn't have a huge amount of like specific looking into the document and sort of saying I don't think we should do this one. I think we should do this other one. Um, is it okay to suggest that if folks want to send written um, edits to this, suggested edits that we they can send them to the planning team just like you would edits to the minutes and we will of course anything will be made public that we want to want to bring back to the large group in the next meeting is that something we can do yeah okay and i would just yeah. say given given our experience that it's really important to not put your opinion filter on that yeah. we we did it it was hard mm -hmm. um, and to go into the document and i know liz was really good at like having that thing out and reading it to us <laughs> um but yeah. find it in the document yeah um, um, we that's, fell into some yeah, that's cool. great. That's yeah, great. Yeah. Um, and the, the only other thing I'd say, just and this is based on you know, like, um, my my experience for what it's worth working in groups that are trying to make decisions around contentious topics like this. I don't think we should have an expectation that scoring against these criteria is going to solve the question for us, <laughs> right? We will use this criteria. We're, we're not, it's not going to spit out an answer, but it's going to help us figure out like where to go directionally. It's going to help us figure out where are the areas that we really are aligned and where are we not aligned and sort of are there ways to bridge those differences. So it's a tool, but it's not the tool. So I want to just I kind of set our expectations around what this can do and what it can't do. It's really important and it will help us get towards decision making, but it's not going to make the decision for us. We're going to have to have those hard conversations after we run through things with the criteria. So it'd be almost like 
the beginning of the decision making, not the end. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So I think we want to, with that, um, talk about some next steps and get to public comments. Um, so if we could move the slide deck ahead. Um, so next meeting um, is going to be um, April 30th, um, back at Keys Road. And I'm sorry, that has a little <laughs> date. April 30th, not April 11th. Um, we're going to continue working through some documents. Uh, everything's going to come back and think, we're, think about exactly how we want to spend that meeting. Um, just want to say, you know, um, our initial thinking is keep going through the documents we need to review. Moving forward, you know, if, you, if we might be bringing in experts, right? Um, if you think that that's going to be helpful, you have ideas around people you want to bring in, send those to the planning team. I think the earlier we can get feedback on that, the better. Um, Please stay tuned for readings and minutes. We will um, we'll share those with you as soon as we, we have them ready. May 4th site visit, okay? Um, so a reminder about that, that's gonna be shortly after our next meeting. Um, so David, you kind of want anything else you want to say? Well, I, I guess I, I do need, we need to have some kind of sign up or yeah. we need to know who's coming because mm -hmm. we gotta make sure we're planning. <laughs> You know, I'm assuming we'll canoe people out from there, so we need to know and plan. It's a pretty mm -hmm. big operation. Can we bring our kayaks? Or can we you can, our yeah, you bring your, that would be helpful, but we it gets pretty crowded in there. I, I think I need to know. Okay. Yeah. Would it help if I created a sign up sheet? Well, could, why, why don't we touch base and we'll, we'll, we'll get out the information to folks um, and okay. give them a chance to sign up. As but the scouts yeah. need to know pretty readily what's okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just clarify? Right? April yeah. 4, 4th, oh, sorry, May 4th is not the same as that is a separate visit than what we we're talking about for the Scout Island and the crossing. Oh, yeah. that is Scott. Yeah. Oh, that was May 5th. I know, May 4th. May 4th, yeah. Um, so can I also ask about other site visits? So that's a very specific yeah. one. Yeah. Um, I think there's, um, I, I would love for us to walk, yeah. you know, you know, Jerome, the surrounding area, the outfall, all these mm. things that we keep talking about, the yeah. agricultural land, yeah. and there are all these words that we keep using, and I'm, yeah. I'm not sure we've all yeah. seen them. It'd be great to see them together. Yeah, I thought that was your, I think I thought that was your Why don't we do the call? I mean, I think let's touch base with David about sort of what, what's possible for May 4th, and then I think we can also touch base with you, Vicky, about sort of if it makes sense to combine those, or I think we've not imagined a single site visit. We've imagined we're going to probably go there you know, a couple of times given the changes over the year, right? Um, so we can think about if it makes sense to try to combine it or do that sort of thing. It would make a long day for trying to do Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's worth just having an hour where we walk the front of this and. Well, we also, April 30th is the second night of the county. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, so, yeah. oh, yeah. Okay, that's not a good one. So we'll, all right, so stay tuned for scheduling. We'll be in the back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe if we could push it a week or. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thanks for that, Mark. Really important. Yeah, it would be cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, sorry, David was just thinking about the time of day on my board. Well, it, it, it I, I don't know exactly when it'd be, but it would likely be like mid afternoon, early to mid afternoon. Mm -hmm. And David, it's a trend, it's a it's a ceremony. We're going it's to a watch. ceremony for, for for what what it's for the Cub Scouts who are crossing over to become Boy Scouts. Scouts. Okay, good. Being admitted to the and if a lot of years it's the same day as as um Drop off, swap off, it's the scouts work. Oh, so it's like a fat day. Yeah. And so they don't actually aren't able to get out there till one, two, three o'clock. Not okay. this year. Drop swap will be good. Okay. So that it, it may run earlier, but I can't imagine it be in the morning. Okay. Okay. Um all right. So we will we will follow up on, on that. Um Scheduling and getting gone to people who are going to be coming to you, David, and then we'll also follow up on the meeting date. Um, so we wanted to raise as another next step um, the idea of a Concord Bridge article. Um, this has been something that's been named the number of meetings um, that we think would be a valuable form of public outreach. Um, so we, you know, you can see on the screen there are some bullets um, suggesting 
So some different topic areas for that. Um, we would share our charge. We'd share kind of who's in the group. Um, we'd talk kind of in general terms about what we've been doing so far. We'd name um, opportunities for public input, right? Public comments that we're having at our meetings, um, the future public meetings, right? We don't have those scheduled yet, but we will be doing that. Um, the the website. So we actually have been thinking we can put a little comment form on the website. This is a suggestion that came in. Um, so I think if, if you're feeling like that's okay, we, we go ahead and do that. Note that in our Concord Bridge article. Um, and I think the idea would be that this would be, you know, signed off, signed by our, our co-chairs, mm -hmm. right? Um, as the as the authors. And I mean, a question for you is, I guess, are you comfortable with this, like authorizing us to draft that? Do you want to have more of a conversation about pieces that need to go in it um, beyond what's on the screen there? I don't think it's one by the chairs. I, I, I was told, I was thinking, we were thinking, you have a committee of are, are this large and already a lot of them yeah. terrible. You know? yeah. <laughs> but so, you know, can you imagine what it would look like? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I think how long it would take. Oh, how long would it take? Could be, that could be our product for I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be successfully co drafted the Concord Bridge. Right. <laughs> um, That's great. Thanks. So anyway, so it sounds like any uh, any objections to kind of that approach? Are you, are you okay with that, authorizing us to do that? Okay. And it would be you guys. Would be, okay. Okay. Final planning. Um, <laughs> I have a question that might be yeah. relevant to this, just in terms of Scout's input. Um, I, I guess got a request from the Girl Scouts that they want to, they would like to, like the Boy Scouts got a briefing from the NRC and from the Friends yeah. at Warner yeah. Pond. And so the Girl Scouts are now asking, like, well, where's our briefing? Can yeah. we get a briefing? I said, wow, well, that was done before the task force was formed. Hmm. And I said, now we're kind of into the, it's it's kind of a different world order now. Um, and I don't really know what to tell them in terms of when or how we would do briefing. So it, I didn't know if, it, if we had a position on it, it made sense to men in the opportunities for public input. That's why I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. Or, but I still need an answer back, even if you say it doesn't belong in this Concord Bridge article. Um, I, I'd appreciate some guidance on what to communicate back to the Girl Scouts. Well, couldn't the NRC and Friends of Warner's Pond meet with the Girl Scouts? Because I love the idea that the they, Girl they, Scouts they, themselves they, they, they would love questions. They would love that if, if that's what the task force would Wouldn't it be more appropriate for chairs to meet with? <clears throat> it depends on on you know the information that they're looking for as well. Um, they want to know what the the options are, what the you know what the controversy is. I mean, I think this article will help <laughs> them to have that in advance. I'm just trying to find a way to keep it equal to what the boys got. I don't want to. Well, that's what they country. said, but I, you know, I explained to them that you know it, it's kind of. Different now. It's not like we're just two. Yeah, right. right. Can I give us some context as someone who's in the yeah. program? So we we back when the alternative analysis came out, we kind of had a brief because it came out at the scout house board meeting. We had a brief kind of like, all right, this is the thing that's happening, and then kind of like didn't. And I, I think because Scout Island generally is used more by the boy scouts, and kind of we were like, well, what are people thinking? All right, and left. And I, I know uh, now they're looking, they just want to know, understand, and be involved. I don't think it has to be the back scene uh, presentation. Right, I, I don't think it has want. to be the yeah. uh, I think they really are just looking to make sure they understand exactly what's going on with it since yeah. they don't necessarily use it as much, but it is, mm -hmm. you know, some fish, some fish do, some fish do, some fish do. And it's great they're interested. Yeah, so, no, I was, and I was so to see some of the, like the, some of the older scouts want to understand more. Yeah. So is this something that kind of the task force is comfortable letting the um, the co-chairs and the NRC and friends to sort of sort out? Uh, yeah, going to make yeah. their comment that one of the reasons why there's so much representation that was sort of designed into this by the NRC is so that people who represent those groups could could keep them informed mm -hmm. um, from their perspective. So, you know, I, I would mm -hmm. feel very comfortable with you representing what we're up to to the to the scouting organizations and, and hopefully I think that any kind of briefing like that is great to know about because I think it's an opportunity for maybe somebody else to to listen and hear what kinds of questions are raised and, and issues. But 
Um, it seems to me that, that that's a way to sort of spread the workload. And I think that it's just consistent with some of the discussion that we've had about communicating and being early here. Yeah. So specifically on the, I'm holding May 22nd, 6 to 8 30 p.m. It doesn't have to be two and a half hours. But briefing, but I'm holding that time on that they've said works for them and it works on my calendar. May 22nd, 6 to 8 30 p.m. Okay. I don't have any, I don't have any problem with you doing it. Yeah. Sure. And I would love it if one or more other task force members came as well. I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll can't I'll have to be a so, we'll, um, so I'll let them know that yeah. we will come. It'll be me and there likely the likely likely to be other task yeah. 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 we'll go. Yeah. Um okay. Um so great, thank you for that. Um we'll just as a note, we'll send out another meeting feedback form. Thanks for all the feedback. Actually, it's been very helpful. Some comments have come in on right. recent issues like. Having clarity on time, you know, getting things in advance, it's been it's been helpful. Um, consultation, etc. Um, we do want to get to public comments, so I want to. Yes, yes, and, that, and so let me open it up to uh, public comments from anyone who wants to speak who's here or uh, online. Um, we ask you to keep within two minutes, and you know we're in conquer. We want to make sure you're. I you know you will be respectful of your comments. Avoid personal attacks, and again, keep it to no more than two minutes. So, anyone anyone care to speak? Stop sharing. Anybody behind us? Anybody on online? Okay. Okay, no hands. No hands. Wow. All right. Well, back, back to you, Chris. Okay. All right. So then, uh, with no further business, then in front of the task force, I'm adjourning the meeting at uh, seven o'clock.